Trump's been posting some interesting stuff out there. Now, you know, I'm not a big fan of government projects. He said it's time to start talking about greatness in our country again. Generations of Americans pursued big dreams and daring projects that once seemed absolutely impossible. They pushed across an unsettled continent and built new cities in the wild frontier. They transformed American life with the interstate highway system. Magnificent it was. And they launched a satellite to orbit all around the Earth. But today, our country has lost its boldness. Under my leadership, we will get it back in a very big way. If you look at just three years ago, what we were doing was unthinkable. How good it was, how great it was for our country. Our objective will be a quantum leap in the American standard of living. That's what will happen. Here are just a few of the ways we can do it. Almost one third of the land mass of the United States is owned by the federal government. With just a very, very small portion of that land, just a fraction, one half of 1%, would you believe that? We should hold a contest to charter up to 10 new cities and award them to the best proposals for development. In other words, we'll actually build new cities in our country again. These freedom cities will reopen the frontier, reignite American imagination, and give hundreds of thousands of young people and other people, all hardworking families, a new shot at home ownership and, in fact, the American dream. Another big opportunity is in transportation. What do you think about that idea, huh? What do you think about that idea? Federal government land being uh, set aside for projects for new cities. Just a few of the ways we can do it. Almost one third of the land mass of the United States is owned by the federal government with just a very, very small portion of that land, just a fraction, one half of 1%. Would you believe that? We should hold a contest to charter up to 10 new cities and award them to the best proposals for development. Interesting, interesting, right? So it's sort of tapping into his real estate, right? Skill set and taking aside federal land to donate it back to the private industry and a small percentage of it. You know, it's an interesting idea. It's a very interesting idea. And it has me thinking about my position on the role of government, which is uh, very minimal. If I was to sort of be the person who said, okay, you have to have a government, or they said you have to have a government, what should the government do? And what can the government do that is useful that the private sector cannot do? And it would be something really big. It would be something that the nation cannot necessarily outsource without creating a massive public cost. What I'm thinking of, what you're having a difficult time describing it abstractly, but would be nuclear energy. I can see a justification for the government stepping in and really, really taking the lead on like a nuclear energy project. I mean, at least for maybe coordinating and funding the development, right? A massive cost to develop a ton of nuclear energy. But if, if the government did that, let's say they built 50 nuclear power plants for every state, safe Gen 4 energy was basically free, right? Like zero cents, one cent up to, uh, you know, 50 households, one cent a kilowatt hour up to 50, 50 households of energy for you. And then free riders above that, anybody who's using, let's say a thousand times the standard quota, they have to pay a lot more because you don't, you, you want to take care of the free rider problem. But anyways, the point is the government can just start that. They can say, all right, we're going to spend a trillion dollars over the next 10 years, but we're never going to think about energy again, ever. It's going to be free for everybody in the future. And that's just going to be the cost of maintenance. And, and that's it. Can you think about what that would do for the economy? And they would manage the nuclear energy. And once it's built, and this would all be delegated to private contractors who would do the actual building but it would be funded as a massive societal thing. Like something like that, I can think, okay, I can see myself getting excited about something like that. That's what I think the space program was for a lot of people. It was something that there was no way that anybody in the private sector just decentralized would think about funding something like that. So they decided, okay, we'll just pull it together and we'll fund something like that. But then of course, SpaceX came out and they, they made it more efficient. 
They made it better. They're doing it better and they've privatized it. So you can see how that model might work for something like a new city, something in this vein. But again, I don't know. My, my general rule, and it's a good rule, like a good heuristic, the default standard is, is the government's not really good at developing and innovating in any way. In this formula, maybe it's just the government just gives up some of the land that it has already basically ceased for itself and for the people who control the government. So like, for example, right, uh, map federal land U.S., much of this is federal land tons and i actually learned a lot about this when i was in yellowstone or in jackson hole you know how all of this became preserved and yeah that's all federal land so the feds own a ton of it all that stuff in red which is kind of crazy you know why is it their land like why in arizona do they own half the stinking land what if I want to go develop some property up there? They've taken almost all Nevada, which is crazy. You, know, you get the point of it. So what if they just didn't, they didn't necessarily have to go build. We're not asking the federal government to build all of these new cities. We're just saying, can you just give us some land back and just let us do it? Just award it to developers who've got the best plan, the best cost, all the things. And maybe we develop something cool and exciting and something new. And then the private sector can go and run with it. So it wouldn't actually cost all that much. You're just opening up and releasing new land and you've got some administrative costs and then you have potentially a windfall. And I like that idea. And I think that's a beautiful thing about America, which is so you've got 50 states and they're little laboratories of democracy. So you can have California, which is running itself into the ground. And you've got Florida, which is seemingly offering a different solution and causing people to leave. I saw another headline that California was running out of actual u-haul trucks leaving and look at that like the feds own all of that give me a break so it's an interesting idea by trump and it's stuff that like nobody else is really talking about like they're all talking they'll all continue to talk about ukraine and social security all right and we can only take so much of that before you, you want the country to do big, cool things. This was 12 hours ago. Here's what he posted about the DOJ. The U.S. Injustice Department, which has dangerously become the radical left Democrats' weaponized system of law, which is true, is threatening and harassing many people that work for me, wanting them to say anything bad in order to be left alone or even set free. They are being carted off to Washington, D.C. and put before a grand jury where the modern-day Gestapo does everything in its power to make them look and sound as bad as possible. This Soviet style of justice is going to take down the USA bad. Yeah, I agree with that. It is bad. And that's one of, that's like one of the things that has fired me up most and I would say made me probably the most sympathetic and supportive of Trump throughout his entire era has the weaponization of the DOJ against him. I have found it to be just offensive from day one with all the Flynn stuff, with all of the Visselyak, all of the Russian ambassador phone call scandal, all of the PP tape, the Michael Sussman, uh, Jim Baker, FBI, that whole thing, everything from there. It is like the most disgusting perversion of our justice system that you can imagine because it's coordinated. It's like this orchestrated conspiracy, literally, right, to try to impeach him to try to deviate his entire administration. It was so reprehensible. It's like, even if you don't, I'm not, I'm not saying this about me, but even if you didn't like him, you'd have to just go, are you serious? Like, do you like, do you like that they're doing this to anybody in this country? I mean, basically setting people up and framing them. Whereas you have other people in, uh, you know, worse positions like Hillary Clinton, who had, who set up a whole fake uh, server and everything and literally was, consciously trying to hide evidence right she gets she gets put up on a pedestal and cherished and honored and revered it's really a sad state of affairs i think what, what made it gross to me it was, it was illustrated the uh, just the two tiers you've got this power structure and if, if you threaten the power structure they can orient the whole power structure to knock you back down and back out and i don't think we've ever seen it so nakedly on display openly for all of us and it all came out and you saw it again in 2020 where you had all of these different these entities to orient themselves just to deny one person the presidency. Wild scene.
and I don't know, maybe I'm just a sucker for the underdog or whatever, but it might shape up to be that way again. We'll have to see. Another great poll came out. 64 to 31%. I'm sure the fake news media will be thrilled. Donald Trump's up 64%. And um, here's Kerry Lake. Looks like kissing a picture of Trump that he signed. 